Hi, good morning everybody. My name's uh, Rob Russell. I'm a CTO and co-founder of uh, Sensei. Um, our vision is all about bringing predictive analytics to the mass market to, um, the, to, in, in a way that people um, don't even know they're using it and in, in sectors where people don't even think that they need it. Um, it's all about knowing the, uh, the future state of, uh, of, of machines. Um, <coughs> I come from a background that's involved in uh, these type of machines, um, more specifically <coughs> helicopters, and this is where condition monitoring uh, as, as, a, as a sector has is, is evolved, uh, and we have predictive analytics that comes out of this area. Um, most of my background is within helicopters, and uh, there's something they say about helicopters, actually, is that they, they, they don't actually fly, they, they just vibrate so much that the earth rejects them. Um, and as a result of all that vibration, you, you, you get failures inherent in, in, uh, in, in the operation. Um, and the, in this sector, that we've had a lot of maturity in the condition monitoring area. But as we look forward to this um, ever-connected world and connected devices full of sensors, we have to think about how we can make pre the predictive analytics ubiquitous and going into um, the type of things that we'll have in our everyday lives. You know, we've all got roofs covered with solar panels. There's small factories out there operating with uh, new advanced machinery, even machines that are used within um, sort of the retail sectors and things like that. And even within agriculture, we've actually ran some trials this year in the agricultural sector, which has uh, been a real eye-opener for us. Um, so the current systems that are out there, um, they, they, they tend to be focused on large corporations and they, they, they're, they're quite expensive in their nature. Now, our approach is to try and find ways of breaking that down and, and busting that cost barrier. And, and that comes with changes that we see in technology with the likes of the Internet of Things, cloud computing and machine learning. Um, the other disadvantage that we have in the, the, the current implementations of these solutions that you require teams of people to be looking at the outputs of the system um, and then taking those outputs and gener put, con converting them into a form uh, that the business can then use to drive decisions. Um, so understanding what a vibration signal in a gearbox is actually telling you and does that mean that you have to um, pull that helicopter in for some deep maintenance or is it just the case you, could, you need to perform some more uh, detailed inspections? Um, the other big problems that we, that we see within the, the existing sectors is that these solutions are, uh, are, are siloed and the data tends to be locked up. Um, you, you don't find a, an exchange of data and benefits even within the single organisations. So um, I don't know, what one single operator of uh, a fleet of trains probably doesn't share the data from that single train type across within their organization to extract benefits and understanding about the way that um, possibly wheels are degradating over time. Uh, and, and there's great advantages to be found there. Um, and, and another problem that we, we are looking to overcome is the, is the time to actually show a benefit to the person that's actually doing the maintenance job. Um, and these poor maintainers, they're, they're, they're the people that are helping to gather the data and bring it back. Um, and it's sometimes it takes months before they actually see an operational benefit going forward. Um, so our whole sort of mantra is that you know, introducing predictability into machines will deliver profitability through to businesses. Um, but it has to be done in a way that is um, easily accessible uh, and scalable and also um, has a cost point that you can get a return on investment. Um, so our vision really starts with the Internet of Things, combining that with uh, machine learning and the principles of condition monitoring. Now, um, the point here is that the current um, solutions that are out there are very focused on delivering problems from, for a very specific asset type. But our, our vision, we see that bringing machine learning into this and actually st stepping back and not caring too much about the actual physical properties of the machine and, and the geometry, but looking at the behavior that you see from the data coming back from the sensors. Um, we see that we can bring that with condition monitoring and actually start to predict any type of machine failure. Um, in my experience within aerospace, the things that have uh, tended to ground entire fleets and have been big surprises to aircraft operators and manufacturers aren't typically the things that the condition monitoring systems have been designed to monitor for. 
There tend to be the more obvious things that you can assess the failure modes from designs or by it from destructive testing. Um, but unusual things that can happen within de in, in designs where you get um, material quality problems, construction problems, these are the things that the condition monitoring systems sometimes are actually tuned not to look for the, the indicators that you, you would use to assess those problems. So by using machine learning, we'll take in a far broader approach to looking at the data. Um, and, and, and we see that will give us an advantage. Now, one of the problems that we face is that we're going to need some smart people to do this. And uh, I've got one of them with me today, actually. But we talk about the problem as um, this waste of analytic minds. Now, back in 2012, um, Harvard Business Review came up with this lovely quote about data science being the sexiest job of the 21st century. But what, what's, it actually, what's, actually, what's that actually turned into? Well, all these great data scientists that are pouring out of these universities with these excellent minds and PhDs are all being absorbed into these uh, great big internet companies, your Googles and your Amazons and your Facebooks. Um, but what really upsets and grates me is that they're actually being put to use to make me buy stuff I don't want and I don't need. And it, is, it really is a waste of, of, of great minds. Um, so our problem is that as a, as a relatively new startup and the scale that we're at, we can't compete against this. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to scale that data scientist role. Um, and I mean, everybody's aware of these sort of graphs where you've got human populations plateauing theoretically, um, but connected devices going exponentially. Um, but th this hides part of the problem. You know, the, the sort of pink line that we've got showing the human population, well, the, 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 the actual line that you'd have of the people with the technologies that you can use is like way down here somewhere. So the problem's immense that we need to solve. So it's all about automating the data scientist's role. Um, and the sort of the mantra that we use internally is that if you can't beat them, um, well, we're just going to make them obsolete. Yeah. Um, so how are we going to do this? It's all great talking about it. Um, so where do we see the problem? So machine learning is the core of, of our sort of uh, platform and our vision. That fundamentally is, is, a, is a, a relatively stable discipline and, and is well known. The problem really isn't there. The problem's at either end, okay? And it's where the human intensive activities take place. It's on the inputs and it's understanding these disparate sources of data that we're going to find over the internet of things and how you make sense of that and you understand which part of the machine learning process that you should apply it to. And then it's at the other end. It's how do you take the output um, of all this fantastic analytics and turn it into something that you can put into the hands of uh, somebody that's generally non-technical. Um, maybe as they're operating uh, you know, 100 coffee machines across 100 coffee shops uh, and, and it's, trying, it's trying to get a benefit out of, uh, of some condition monitoring on those machines. And then how do you combine that with feedback and take the lessons learned from the operational environment and the way the users are, are, are uh, acting on the data and, and improve the whole bit, uh, model? So the, starting with the, the data inputs, <clears throat> I mean, we've got lots of raw data coming into the system. And we talked yesterday about standards, uh, but that was more to do with hardware standards. We see there's a huge standards problem within um, software and data coming in from an IoT space. Um, and somebody said to me once that standards, they're a bit like toothbrushes. Everybody's got one, but you don't want to use anybody else's. Yeah, so uh, we have to solve that problem by introducing some sort of semantic order. Now, we're actually building um, a semantic annotation process that will take the data that we've got coming in, start to apply metadata and tags to that so that then we can understand in a far clearer way what it is we're looking at and cross-relate that to different um, data sources. <coughs> then looking at the, um, the, the outputs, we talked earlier, some people already mentioned 3D printing is an evolutionary process. But what's happening here is we see that there's, we're at a kind of a hunter-gatherer stage within data analytics. Um, and within Sensei, we see that we've got to evolve that from, from a hunter-gatherer stage to, cu to cultivating insights out of data. There's too much time spent looking at charts. And we've got predictive analytics, but we've got to turn that into something that's readily accessible. Um, and we are doing that through a process of natural language generation and looking to bring messages like this out to a user, not asking them to look at, um, at squiggly lines on dashboards and the like. Um, and then it's about closing the loop. 
and making sure that people can f give us feedback into the system. Um, it's got to be, I mean, all these great words, informative, intuitive, and integrated. So um, the informal part, we, we're looking at using um, paradigms from things like social media. Everybody's quite happy ticking uh, sort of likes on Facebook. Let's make it nice and easy for people to tell us what, did we tell them something useful? Um, and if that was useful, how do we integrate that back into the model and use it again? And if we told you something ridiculous, how do we um, turn that into something we don't tell you again in the future? And then also looking outside of the condition monitoring space, bringing in business, operational data, historic data that's around in open data sources in and around where uh, these sensor devices are uh, and, and making far better sense and, and putting uh, all, all this information into context uh, that is, is key for us. Um, so the, the, the key message is uh, you know, predictive analytics for the IoT space. Um, it's, it's coming and um, it's, it's going to be something that's going to drive a lot of business efficiencies and business benefit. Um, and that's, that's me.